This is the plaintiff, Kurt Kohler. He says he and the defendant are both board members at their condominium complex. And the hothead physically assaulted him in a rage and pushed him to the ground. He then grabbed him and injured his knee in the fracas. He had to have arthroscopic surgery. He had out-of-pocket expenses, and the defendant needs to pay him for all the pain and stress he's caused. He's suing the louse for every penny of the $5,000 he's owed and hopes the judge will give it to him, but good today for what he did. This is the defendant, William Arian. He says he and the plaintiff were having a discussion about a condo issue, and he called the plaintiff a name for your rear end, which he didn't like. The plaintiff turned around in a huff, and as he was walking off, he tripped and fell. He then started rolling around on the ground, saying he was going to call the cops because he hit him. He never touched this guy, but did offer to help him to get up because he saw he was in distress. Bottom line, this guy had knee issues before all of this. He would never resort to pushing a man down or attacking anyone, and owes this over-exaggerator zip. He's accused of getting into it with a neighbor. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. These litigants live in the same condo complex. The plaintiff says the defendant physically attacked him and hurt him bad. But the defendant says the plaintiff called him a name, turned around, and fell. And that's how he got hurt. It's the case of condo mania. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Kurt Kohler, you are suing William Arian for $5,000 in damages that you say he caused when he assaulted you. Tell me what happened. Okay, on um, February February 8th, we... Um, Is that of this year? Of this year, correct. How do you two know each other? We are board members. We're condominium boards for Blue Lake Condos. Condo board members. Okay. Correct. And you've been on the board for how long? I've been on the board so, for maybe 15 years plus. Okay. Uh, he's and brand new to the board. And what's your role on the board? My role at the time was the director. What is it now? It, I'm not on the board now. Okay, and we what is your role on the board? At that time, I was the uh, recording secretary. Are you on the board now? No. Okay. I imagine this incident had a little something to do with both of you getting off the board or no? No. No? Nope. We had nope. an actual election. Oh, and you lost the election? Well, then yes. maybe you did. All right. <laughs> so what happened? On February 8th, I, um, well, Feb let's back it up one, one day. February 7th, I, um, at Pompano Beach Historical Society, I saw a fire chief. And I asked him, not the fire chief for our d district, a fire chief. And I t was telling him about our situation that, that w the board wants to do. What not, had the board wanted to do? They wanted to put locks on, on storage room doors. Storage room doors at the condo that are where? That are in, in, on each floor. We have storage room doors for the condominiums. We have five condos on each floor. Some buildings have so seven. So they're joint storage rooms? They're like the five, the, the each floor has, it's not that each tenant has one, they, each, each floor has each, one each communal? Floor, each condo has a, has a storage area. All right, so go ahead. So I talked to the, the a fire What had the board wanted to do? They wanted to put locks on doors. On, on the each, outside door on or outside in the cage door? On outside door. Okay, and there had been a vote about that. There was a discussion on a board. Was there a it. vote or was yes, there a there discussion? Was. There was a vote. There was a vote. There yes, was a there vote. Was a vote. And which way did you vote? I voted no for it. And you voted yes. Yes. And you voted yes because? We had problems with uh, uh, homeless people sleeping in the storerooms. Okay. And I had called the police uh, a few days prior to that to chase uh, homeless people away off of the property. And the first thing the police said is, why don't you have locks on these doors? Okay. And so why didn't you want locks? Because it's inconvenience for if there's a fire in the storage rooms. Some people store on, during hurricanes like gasoline. If there's a fire in the storage but, but rooms. But you could say that about every apartment, too. Every apartment has a lock. That's true, too. But so, what, I, so you went to some function and you spoke to a friend of yours who's no, a fire chief? No, not a friend. A fire chief. For How Pompano did you know Beach. that person? Because he was a, he was there at the meeting. Okay, so you talked to that fire chief, and then what happens between the two of you? So I came back on the eighth. I, I came into the complex. I saw Mike sit on a golf cart, and I went up. Were to, you on a golf cart or were no, you walking? I was, not. I was in a car. Okay. I drove drove into the complex. 
saw Mike at the buildings, which I can show so you. So when you talk to him, are you sitting in your car or do you get out of your no, car? No, I got on my car. Okay, so you're walking past where he is. I was on the grass. On the grass. I walked into the grass. He was on a golf cart, okay. parking this way, facing out this way. Okay. And out, and he was, and so he was on. I walked in around this sign here. There's a sign, a tollway sign. Okay. And I asked, and I told him, Mike, we, I talked to a fire chief, and he, before I could say anything else, he was getting off the golf cart, and he approached me, and he put his hands on my left side, and I fell. How did he put his hands on your left side? When I was, I, I'm going to, hey, walk. hold on, hold on. I'm going to send my bailiff over there. My sure. bailiff is going to be you. And you're going to be him, and you're going to do to my bailiff what you say he did to you. Sure. You're walking out that way. He turned, he turns, and he went like this. On well, my, like what? On my shoulder. He put his hands on me. Right. His, both, his, both of his hands and pushed me, and I fell. Pushed you the, so that you could fall on the ground on purpose? Yes. Okay. He pushed me, and I fell on my right side, and I, I fell, and I, and by, he came over to assist me to come back up. But if he pushed he you, why, why, if he pushed you, why would he help you back up? Because he was, he was being a gentleman trying to get me well, back. He was a gentleman. If he pushed you, he wasn't much of a gentleman. I, I, no, I agree with you. But he pushed me, and I said, Mike, stand back. I'm going to call 911 because I was hurt. At the time, I could feel a pain in my knee. I did try because I was by my car to stand up, and I heard a click. And I, and I went back down. Were you on the grass when this happened or no, on the concrete? I'm on the, you want to go back on the parking yeah. lot. Right. Have a seat. Have yeah. A seat. In the parking lot. Okay. My who is, car. Who is the person with you there? My sister, Kate. Okay. All right. So go on. You're good. So, so I call 911. And he, and at the time, he, there was another maintenance guy. His name's Tommy. He was coming over to help me. I said, no, stand back. I have 911 on the phone. And the police are on their way. And, and um, um, paramedics will be coming to assist me. Okay. And so, they both walked away. Okay. So did uh, the paramedics come? Yes, they did. Do you have a report from the paramedics? Yes, I do. May I see it? What do you say happened? Basically, I was sitting on the golf cart uh, about 8 to 10 feet from the edge of the grass where oh. it meets the asphalt. Let's he drove up in his car came rushing over and said, we have a problem. He, I, he looks to have great difficulty walking now. Is this because of the knee thing? Was he having difficulty walking then, I'm asking? I, he has always had problems walking. At one point... Uh, when you said he came rushing over, that doesn't... But he came rushing. He was actually almost as close to walking quickly as he can do. Okay. Uh, so we have a problem. I called the fire marshal. He says, we can't put locks on the doors. I said, you're expletive deleted uh, and a liar. There's no way the fire marshal told you we can't put locks on the door. They don't care. If they have to get in there, they break through the door, right. just like they would in an apartment. In, in an apartment. Right. right. I said, you're causing trouble again. And no, no. Why no. do you say again? He's been feuding with the whole condominium for as long as he's lived there. And I've only lived there since uh, uh, September before last. So I guess it's a little over a year and a half. Where, where are you guys from? Pompano Beach. Pompano Beach. All right. So what do you say happened when he came rushing towards you? He tells you, we can't do it. The fire marshal, you call him a liar and a... Uh, Rectal delete. orifice, and then what? <laughs> he started backing up. I didn't get up. I, he started backing up, got to the edge of the grass, fell sort of backwards or sideways, started rolling around on the ground yelling, you hit me, you assaulted me, I'm calling 911. And I, this is ridiculous. Kurt, let me help you up. Stay away from me. I'm, I'm going to have you arrested. And uh, so at that point, I walked about 50 feet away and just waited for the police to come. 
And the police came? They did. Did anybody get arrested? No. Okay. May I see the, both the police report and the fire rescue report? It's in that okay. report, okay. Eric. I'm sorry. Hold on. According to fire rescue, there were no visible injuries. You were, you requested to be transported to Broward Health North, saying you had pain in your legs after falling. And Mr. Arion disputed all the allegations on that day, said he, you tripped over a curb. And according to you, you said that he had a known history of making other allegations that board members had attacked him. Uh, a, few, a few years prior to that, uh, the president of the uh, Land Association Board, which is the mother association, allegedly assaulted him and held a gun to his head. He took it to small claims court, and it was thrown out. What happened out. with the prosecutor's office? That would be a three-year minimum mandatory. Uh, they, they, it was thrown out of small claims court, and nothing ever came of it. It was thrown out because, due to the fact, he denied it. He did say he owned a gun, but he never took it out of his, out on his possession. Have you ever spoken to the person who he accused on that other case? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, this happened before I was there, right. I spoke to people who were there. They said that do it- you have the, the, uh, It's fine. Do you have the hospital report? Yes, I do. May I have that? Is your sister moral support or is she a witness? She's moral support. Okay. What day did this happen? It happened on February, February 8th. When did you go to the hospital? February 8th. So what operate, they ended up operating on your knee, right? Correct. A, a torn- Meniscus. Mm -hmm. Meniscus? Meniscus. And so that's, ar how does that work? Arthroscopic? Ar Arthros I'm sorry. It's I have fine. Implants arthroscopic, correct. Okay. Did you have troubles with your knee before this? No. Did you have troubles walking before this? Yes, I have neuropathy in my hands and my feet. Well, it definitely seems like um, you had some kind of injury that day, but the question becomes how did the injury occur? Um, are you, is your knee feeling, when was the surgery? The surgery was um, April, April 4th. And so how are you doing from the surgery? That was I'm a few months ago. I'm still having problems with my knee buckling, and I talked to the doctor verbally over the phone. He said if it doesn't stop, he's going to maybe order me braces. I told him my leg is more sturdier when I walk. On both legs? Yes, because I'm having problems on my left side too. But mo the brace will probably I'm sorry, be on. I, I do have a question for you. Can you come up to the microphone over here? Because that, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. This one. Sure. I'll keep it short. I just want to know, okay. before this incident in February, was he having difficulty walking? He has idiopathic neuropathy. So he has like pins and needles. Right. So he does walk slowly, um, you know, and, and that kind of thing. Right. But he didn't have problems with knees. The knees. Right. And uh, so I went to the doctor with him when the doctor released him from the surgery. And, the do and at that time, he complained about the left knee. And the doctor said that the left knee was because he was compensating because the right knee still was in the healing process. So compensating on, on the left side. So that's why he now has problems with the left knee as well. Uh, do you know what happened here or not? You weren't I there, really don't. don't I, I was at work. Yeah. at the time right. so do you live in that building no i don't i okay. live in i live in miami but ha, i do come okay. up once a week you are one of the blessed okay go ahead and sit down <laughs> thank, you. thank you for your help all right you know i um did you push him no did you touch him any no uh, are there any witnesses to any of this there's no witnesses no so if it's 50 50 literally 50 50 who loses both. Well, the only one can lose because the plaintiff's suing for money. The plaintiff loses. He was embarrassed and now he got hurt and he's trying to sue. Okay, let's say 50-50, you cannot figure out what's what. Who loses? Yeah, it's 50-50. It's like you said, it's eerily similar to what's going on the past couple weeks in uh, the Supreme Court. Well, well, the Senate maybe, <laughs> and I get your point. But anyway, going inside the courtroom. When you come into court, you have the burden of proof. You do. And it's very hard to come into court and say, you're saying he touched me and pushed me and that's why I fell. And he's saying, um, no, I didn't. I, I wasn't anywhere near him. We have problems and I had just called him a nasty name because he has problems with everybody and I'm one of the people who has problems with him. Um, it makes it difficult to find in your favor.
I, you know, being from Miami, I am very familiar with um, condo boards and the condo board culture. <laughs> and the, are you retired? Yes. Are you retired? No, I'm on uh, disability. Okay. Uh, there's an awful lot of time on everyone's hands. <laughs> yes. And there's, you know, that healthy measure of stay out of each other's business doesn't exist <laughs> in uh, Florida and a lot of our condo, condos and condo boards. But, uh, no, or, no, no, no. There is insufficient evidence. There is a, there's a lot of evidence that you've been injured. That's, you've done, you've great in that. But how it happened is your word against his. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not even taking into account that apparently you have the horrible luck where this has happened to you before with board members that you disagreed with. But I'm not even looking at all that. I'm just looking at the facts of this case that happened in an open area in public and there are no other witnesses. And even you described that he, he says, come on, let me help you. You're like, don't touch me. I'm waiting for 911. And it just, you know, I, I, it's insufficient for me to be able to say, you pushed him. And you have to pay for all of his medical bills now because it's all your fault. It's just insufficient for me to be able to say that. So my verdict in this case is in for the, the defendant. The and let me, just let me say something. Stay to yourself and don't have, and don't, with the other board members. Well, you're not a board member anymore either. There's a reason you guys aren't board members anymore now. People want peace where they live, okay? So go ahead and exercise the opportunity to stay a little more to yourself and don't gossip at the condo about what happened here because I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. You got a little bit of a smug smile on your face. I don't know why. I don't know if in your anger you called him a rectal orifice and then went over and touched him and then he slipped. I don't know what happened. But because I don't know what happened, the plaintiff didn't sustain their burden and I can't find against you. Okay? Don't mistake that with a verdict for you. Everybody mind their own business. Okay? Be happy. So the judge finds for the defendant in this case, the plaintiff, Mr. Kohler, just can't prove what, uh, what he's charging the defendant with. You understand the judge's yes, verdict? I understand 100%. You know, it seems like you seem to have problems with, with other board members when you guys get together. Why do you uh, think that is? It's this my nature of, the, nature of the beast, I guess. The, really? They don't like me, and they just, I won't, believe me, I'm... I'm neutral now. I don't talk well, to them. Well, you're not on the board anymore. I'm not on the board. Let me ask you one other thing. You still live there. You're still, I still you're live still there. still neighbors. I love my condominiums. Yeah, but you're neighbors, right? No, we're, we're not neighbors. We, we live in, a, in buildings, different buildings. So you don't run into him that often? No. So you think you can be happy now, live peacefully? I would like to shake a stand and say, yes. Okay, good. No problem. All right. I have no problem. Well, good luck to you, okay? okay? Hope this doesn't happen again. Thank you. All right. Now the, uh, the defendant, Mr. Arian, is coming out. You know, the judge said... Uh, you got a smirk on your face, but she wasn't finding you totally innocent. She just couldn't find him guilty, you know, or you guilty. Uh, you understand her verdict? Uh, yes, I understand it. Uh, the smug look on my face is probably because I know Kurt so well. Okay. So. Well, okay. <laughs> yes. You're lucky. Good for yes. you. Okay? okay? Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, Doug, look. I mean, you've all heard of criminal cases where you have to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. That's kind of like 98, 99%. This is a civil case. And in a civil case, 50-50 means the person with the burden of proof, namely the plaintiff, loses the case. However, all you have to do is tip the scales ever so slightly. Let's say 51, 49%. If the plaintiff could have just pushed it over the line, the plaintiff would have won.